On October 19th of 2017, an unidentified object was discovered flying at incredibly high speeds near our home planet Earth. And after a few days of recording this object, it was quickly realized that it wasn't from around here. It was the very first interstellar object ever recorded, meaning it came from outside of our solar system. Now over the past year, there have been a lot of speculation regarding where exactly it came from, how it formed, what it was made of, and where it could be going. But a recent study from Harvard suggests that it could be an artificial light sail, or in normal terms, an alien spacecraft. So let's talk about that. Now to give you a quick answer regarding whether or not it's actually an alien spacecraft, it probably isn't, but we don't have proof exactly for or against. What scientists are able to do is witness this object flying through the solar system to see, well, is it like comets that we know of? Is it like asteroids? What is it motion? What is its size? What things don't make sense and what things do make sense? And by putting all those dots together, we can get a better understanding of what it is, but we won't really ever be able to know if it actually is an alien spacecraft. And I'll get to that in a second. But in order to understand all this about it and the reasoning why it might not be, we have to go through the steps of discovery, what they found out about it, what realizations they made, what they had to change about their expectations, and why a few things don't add up. So let's go through that. First of all, as I mentioned before, on October 19th of 2017 is when it was discovered. And over the course of three days, they took measurements on its position and its velocity to figure out its full trajectory, as you see now. In fact, at its closest approach to Earth, it was 33 million kilometers away from Earth, or about 20% the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And you might be thinking, that is massive, that is so far away, how is that a close flyby? But when you consider this in perspective of the entire solar system, that's incredibly close. And and that's probably one of the main reasons we were able to see it is because it got that close to Earth. Now also when we discovered it, it was traveling at 49.6 kilometers per second, which is why this made a major uproar in the astronomy community, mainly because this is something that had really never been seen before. And if it had been seen, it was only for some comets that got really close to the sun at that point, but not at distances from the sun as far as Earth, and also not just traveling in the direction that it was because it was out of plane. Now the discovery of this object came from the Pan Stars Telescope in Hawaii, and to relate to Hawaiian tradition, they decided to name this object Oumuamua, which is Hawaiian for a messenger or scout from the distant past, which is representative of this mainly because it's the first interstellar object ever discovered. But there is a bit of a problem with its trajectory. As I mentioned, we first witnessed it when it was about at its closest approach to Earth. But after this point in time, it was traveling back out of the solar system. It had already flown by the sun, and therefore it would get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, which means that people predicted we would only have about two to three months to actually perform or take measurements of it before it got too dim where even our best telescopes wouldn't be able to see it. Therefore, they had to get all their experiments ready to try and get as much data that they would want from it as possible. So a lot of astronomers had to quickly get time on these telescopes to see what exactly this thing is made of, how it is moving, and where it could be going. Now it can be fairly difficult to actually observe one of these objects. I mean, usually when you see on the news, you see pictures like this, but that's just an artist's rendition. In fact, what the actual astronomers are looking at is more like this, just a really small dot flying through the sky. And actually one of the very first things they wanted to predict was the size of it. So they had various observatories all throughout the world try and looking at this object to see what brightness they get. But the strangest thing is they got different brightnesses at different times. Now you might be thinking, is that Morse code? Are they trying to send a signal to us or something? But now unfortunately, that's not true. It's not aliens trying to send a signal to us, but rather it's just an oblong or not symmetrical shape. And this is because when it's rotating throughout space, different sides of it are seeing sunlight and therefore different sides of it are reflecting its brightness back to us. Therefore, we can actually predict what the shape of this thing is depending on what the variation in brightness is. So they actually ended up saying that it's about 10 times longer in length than it is in width and height, which is also completely different than things that we normally expect to see in our solar system. Now, other than just the ratio of Oumuamua between its different sides, they also predicted that it could be anywhere in length from 240 meters to 1,000 meters. Therefore, there's still a lot of information we don't necessarily know about it, but we were able to observe the object in other light spectrums to try and understand what the composition could be made of. And one of the earliest things we found was that it's a dark reddish color, which usually relates to metals, meaning that this thing could be pretty heavy. 
But there were a lot of strange and mysterious things about this object, one of which being that it's coming from interstellar space, meaning it's really cold out there and thus probably has a lot of ice, meaning when it flies by the sun, it's going to exhaust all that and look somewhat like a comet. Therefore, the actual categorization of it early on was to be like a comet. However, they didn't see that. When they were witnessing it through their telescopes, all they saw was just the object itself with no outgassing. Therefore, there either wasn't enough ice for it to actually be shown, or it was just a different wavelength that we weren't actually anticipating. So after the first month or two of observations, Oumuamua was getting stranger and stranger. The size and shape of the object was something we'd never seen before in our solar system. It was made of really heavy metals that we don't necessarily expect to be that prevalent in the interstellar space. And also, it didn't exhaust as much gas, or we didn't see it. Therefore, there's a lot of things that aren't necessarily adding up to what we understand about our solar system and deep space. Now you might be thinking Oumuamua is really interesting, there's a lot of strange things about it that don't necessarily explain how we understand our solar system, but why is this coming up again? Why is it so important? And it's actually pretty fascinating, because over the course of the three months as I mentioned they were able to measure this object, near the end they realized that it wasn't in the position that they predicted it to be. Now let me give a little bit of a background behind why that's important. In orbital mechanics or astrodynamics, we can explain the motions of celestial bodies, whether it be asteroids, comets, planets, incredibly well. I mean, we can predict when the moon is going to eclipse the sun to within seconds. Now because of this, we were able to predict the trajectory of Oumuamua as recent as two or three days after the discovery. But as we watched it over the course of two or three months, it wasn't following that trajectory perfectly. It was fairly close, but it was off by about 40,000 kilometers, which is a small distance in space but is enough to explain some strange motion. Now, after a lot of studies, there are some predictions saying it could be solar radiation pressure, saying it could be extra outgassing like a comet, but a lot of these things don't add up. If it is solar radiation pressure, that means the object has to be really, really light and it's observed to be metal, which isn't going to work if it's this big. And in terms of the outgassing, again, we didn't see any outgassing. We didn't see anything acting like a comet. Therefore, something isn't adding up. So this is where the new study comes in from the scientists at Harvard. Now the article that has gotten a lot of attention over the last week or so has proposed that this could actually be a light sail. Now let me explain the concept of a light sail really quick. This is a very lightweight spacecraft that has a very large surface area, kind of like a sailboat here on Earth. Where a sailboat uses wind to push it through the ocean, a light sail uses, well, light to push it through space. And the constant acceleration that is always on this spacecraft causes it to slowly increase its velocity over time. Now you might be thinking, okay, light isn't going to push it that hard, which is true. Thrusters have a lot higher thrust than light sails. However, the thing about a thruster is you turn it off and it wastes propellant. Whereas light sail, as long as it's getting hit by light, it's always going to be pushed. Therefore, over time, it can reach really, really high speeds. So now that we understand the concept of a light sail, let's jump back to Oumuamua. One thing we can't completely understand is the actual mass of it, but the scientists did say, okay, well, if we use our observations and do make the assumption that it is some sort of metal on the outside, therefore we could say, well, maybe it's just a really, really thin wall, less than a millimeter in thickness. And because of it, it would make the overall mass of the object incredibly light, therefore the electromagnetic pressure caused on it would ultimately cause it to move its trajectory by this 40,000 kilometers, which is something that they could very well predict. Now this concept has raised a lot of questions over the last week or so, and leads us to the big one being, is this actually an alien spacecraft? Now we can observe this just from a fundamental, what is it made of, what does it look like, and see whether or not it could be. And honestly, we don't necessarily know. We don't have enough proof for or against the fact that it is one or the other. But there are some observations that we can make that can lean us away from the alien spacecraft side. One of the first one being the fact that it's tumbling through space. Most of our spacecraft that we actually handle or maneuver aren't tumbling, and the fact of that they are tumbling would basically make them incapable of performing whatever they need to be, whether it be communications, taking pictures, or just taking measurements of whatever we need to. Therefore, the fact that it's tumbling at such a rate that it is would be hard to take pictures. A good example of this is the recent Hayabusa 2 mission dropped one of its Minerva rovers on the asteroid as it was meant to, and when it was taking pictures, basically all of them were blurry when they were falling. 
mainly because it wasn't necessarily stabilizing itself or its attitude to take the right pictures. Now there have been some people proclaiming, well maybe it's tumbling which means it's artificial gravity for whoever could be on board. However, that's probably not true either. This mainly because it's tumbling in multiple directions and if you wanted artificial gravity, it would be most efficient just to tumble or spin in one direction. Therefore, ultimately, it's probably just kind of going out of control. Now, one of the biggest piece of evidence that it's not an alien spacecraft is the fact that it's not emitting any electromagnetic waves. And this is pretty important because if we think of any of the probes we've basically sent anywhere in space, their main form of communication is just using radio waves to get back to us or maybe even lasers for future spacecraft. However, in this sense, we measured these things with radio telescopes and observed it for a very long time and it didn't emit anything. So either it was in a quiet mode so that we wouldn't observe it emitting anything, or it just is a space rock flying through space. Now with all the information I provided, you yourself can actually think, okay, yes, I think it's an alien spacecraft that was just hiding and tumbling to try and look like an asteroid, or you could say, no, this is just a space rock coming from interstellar space and has nothing more to it than that. And that's up to you. We don't have enough proof for or against either case, but we could probably lean towards the against the alien spacecraft part. Now, even though it might not necessarily be aliens, it still is incredibly interesting for astrophysics because a lot of the predictions we made about what this object would be like, it wasn't. I mean, it didn't outgas ice like we would expect it to, had a shape we'd necessarily never seen before, and didn't really change over the time that we saw it. It was also moving in a really strange way, and coming from two different directions that means it probably been in interstellar space for a very long time. So that leads us to the question, what do you think? Do you think Oumuamua is actually an alien spacecraft trying to understand Earth and examine what we are like as a species? Or do you think it's just a rock that came from some other solar system or a collision between planets and eventually got into our solar system for just a few years? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel to learn other things about space, space exploration, and rocket science. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Oumuamua, which represents a scout or messenger from the distant past, which is kind of representative of this object because it's coming from intergalactic space, interstellar space, such as the varying brightness over time and the luminosity and all that junk and whatnot. But in fact, no. But in fact, that's not true. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Now, unfortunately, that's not true. You might think. Now, unfortunately, that's not true. When you have. Now, unfortunately, that's not true. It's